Hi everybody, my name is Neha and I'm a Sikai president and this is um, uh, one of our open sessions. We've been having uh, a few of these and trying to do these on a monthly basis to talk about issues that come up with regards to Sikai volunteers and um, conferences, chapters and such. And volunteering is something that that always comes up, right, because it's, uh, it's central to everything that we do. So uh, Priya, who's our uh, chair for volunteer support, um, has been kind of putting together some thoughts on just what types of initiatives um, or how we move forward on volunteering. So I'll, uh, I'll let her take it um, over from here, but uh, just, just to let you know that this is, um, this is really meant to be like a brainstorming session for everybody to kind of participate. But I think first Priya is gonna do a presentation just to set the context for the types of volunteering opportunities we have. Mm -hmm. So over to you, Priya. All right, thanks Neha. Um, I am thinking, yeah, since we are a small group before I dive in, um, I'd love for us, you know, to have our, our three participants also introduce themselves. So just very briefly, I'm Priya Kumar. I am um, adjunct chair for volunteer support, and I'm also um, an assistant professor at Pennsylvania State University in the Northeast U.S. Um, so, uh, Abdullah, if you want to introduce yourself, if you feel fine with that. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Priya. Um, so my name is Abdullah, or some people call me Abdo, it's for short, shorter. I'm a research scientist at CWI in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And um, so a lot, a lot of my research focuses on emotion HCI, you could say. And I'm also part of uh, Kai Netherlands. So it's a local Sikai chapter in the Netherlands, which we helped reinstate since August, 2020. So I'm very much involved in that, everything from events, web to communications. And the reason I'm here is I was just wondering about the volunteering possibilities. I think I, how much workload it is. Mm -hmm. I feel already pretty overloaded, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's worth hearing out at least what this would involve and whether I could streamline some of the things I already do mm -hmm. and apply them to Sikai as well. Maybe that makes sense or not. Great. And that, that as you started talking, I was reminded of wanting to also encourage um, the people over here to say what they're here, why they're here, what they're here for. So thank you for adding that. Um, Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you. Um, so I'm Sarah Jani. I'm originally from Ghana. Um, my research focus is um, in the area of the first thousand days, how parents seek information in low resource communities. Um, I am in the University of Cape Town, I'm trying to finalize my, my write up now. Um, one of the reasons I'm here is to um, be able to understand a bit better um, what it means to volunteer for Sikai and, and where I can truly fit in um, in that quest. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome. Kim, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, my name is Kim. I am uh, not a professor of working in research. I am working as a recommender engineer <clears throat> at a company called Shopify in Canada. I am in Denmark, but I work for the company in Canada. I've been industry chairs uh, three times, two times for uh, Rexus, ACM Rexus. And I keep getting these invitations from you guys about volunteering. So actually today I just thought I wanted to sign up and see what it was. Um, right. So. I don't know if I'm completely out of place here, so but I just thought I wanted to join and see what is going on. Yeah, excellent. You're not at all, not out of place at all. Um, the <laughs> and I want to. Oh, I also want to add. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I really feel like Rexus is one of our special conferences, just in terms of how they do things. It's slightly different from from others. Uh, I think this year they did a really good job with like COVID safety and health safety. This was. Um, were you able to attend that in Seattle? It was in I Seattle. Was, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. Anything you want to share from from the perspective of of the conference and the community would be great. So thank you all. Of for course. Joining. Great. Yes. So we've got a really nice mix of people who are involved, who are looking to get more involved, interested to hear more. Um, so as Neha said, we want the bulk of the session to be sort of the more conversational brainstorming. And we have a, a Google Doc for that. 
And, um, but first, before we get into that, I did want to take um, a few minutes, about 10 or 15 minutes, to just give an overview of, you know, volunteering across SIGCHI and some of the volunteer efforts that the, the executive committee is focused on. Um, so I will go ahead and share the, I have a couple of slides. Um, can you all see that? Okay. Yep, looks great. Excellent. All right. So welcome, everyone, to our open session on volunteering across SIGCHI. Um, as I put this uh, link in the chat, but the our meeting is governed by SIGCHI's Code of Conduct, which you can get um, more information about here. And we are recording the meeting, um, and so please keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, so our aim for today's session is to brainstorm how volunteering takes place across SIGCHI. Well, to discuss some of the ways it does and then to brainstorm more, um, and then also brainstorm ways to better align volunteer work in all of the different forms that it takes with SIGCHI's uh, core values. And before we dive into volunteering, I wanted to just take a minute to um, uh, reiterate or sort of emphasize what some of those core values are. So SIGCHI aspires to co-create guidelines and best practices for infrastructuring, accessible, safe, sustainable, and equitable spaces for knowledge production. And especially given that SIGCHI is a volunteer-driven organization, that means that volunteers are play a huge role in, in actually doing this work of creating these kinds of spaces. To provide avenues for support and mentorship of our community and all of those who participate in generating knowledge, um, obviously volunteering is something a lot of times the volunteer work is what keeps things going and, and sort of some people may feel like, oh, volunteering is important for your career, it's important for networking, it's important to put on your resume, but we also want to make sure that it's more than just that. It's a place and an avenue for people to really feel like they're growing in their, in their uh, careers, but also, you know, cultivating communities um, of people with whom they um, feel comfortable and, and enjoy working with. And then also to facilitate mutual learning across communities, crossing regional, cultural, institutional, disciplinary, and other borders. And so again, bringing together volunteers from um, diverse backgrounds in all senses of that word um, and, and, and having that also be an opportunity for sort of knowledge exchange and again, for, for growth and, and community. So those are some of the core values that guide um, all of us, certainly on the EC, but also what we envision for the SIGCHI community. And so there are, I, I, we mentioned in the session, I think some of you also were interested in hearing about, you know, well, what does it mean to volunteer in, in SIGCHI? What is a SIGCHI volunteer? And I have certainly spent some time wrapping my head around this. And so um, I have, I've sort of thought about it in, in the, in three main avenues or three, you know, uh, areas where, where volunteering work really happens. And so I'll go over each of those, two of them, two of those clusters are here on this slide. And then the third is on the next one. Um, and so I'll walk through kind of what those avenues are and, and some, and, you know, some of you are already familiar with, or have participated in these kinds of roles. So you're, you're, you're well familiar with these. But I think for a lot of people, when we talk about volunteering in SIGCHI, probably, you know, one of the first things that comes to mind is the conferences. And that's understandable because conferences are, are certainly a huge part um, or the bulk of kind of what SIGCHI is known for, since we are a family of 26 conferences. Um, and the volunteering roles, um, and, and these conferences are largely volunteer run. And the volunteer roles within conferences, um, borrowing, I'm, I'm borrowing on Aaron Quigley's um, sort of characterization here, but he sort of characterized them as related to programming. So this is everything related to the actual content, the technical program, um, and then the logistics, the actually running the, the, the conference. And so this can range from, you know, programming roles are things like reviewing papers, um, technically, you know, being papers chair, uh, workshops chair, things like that. Um, and can range everywhere from, you know, yeah, being a reviewer all the way up. Um, and then logistics roles, of course, are the ones that are you're actually getting the event going. And this can range from anything from the student volunteer opportunities, you know, all the way up to, um, you know, general chair makes a lot of logistics related decisions. Um, I think one important thing to keep in mind is that 
conference, the, the, the people who are really organizing the conference, all of the chairs um, are the ones who, you know, oversee or manage volunteer opportunities. So for people who are interested in getting involved in a particular conference, the conference volunteer, the conference organizers or the sort of steering committee of conference chairs for that conference is the best place to go. Um, but we as the uh, executive committee obviously do um, work closely with those who organize the conferences. And so our SIGCHI EC point of contact for conference related information is uh, Susanna uh, Ball. So beyond the conferences, um, we have our chapters that I'm really excited that we have one of our sort of chapter leaders here. Um, and so they, we have, uh, SIGCHI has 68 local chapters, 68 plus I think, um, local chapters across 36 countries. I think at last count I saw it's about 4,000 members, uh, which is really exciting. And these are local and regional chapters, so student chapters and professional chapters that hold events, foster community, you know, foster the sort of HCI community in, in a local area or region. Um, and so the volunteering roles related to that, and I'm sure Abdullah could speak more to this, are, you know, organizing events, doing community building. And, and again, that's something that sort of for people who want to get involved locally, their local chapter is the best place to start there. Um, but we also do, again, have somebody on the EC whose role is focused on chapters and supporting chapters and helping them develop, and that is Matt Jones. So these are, are two of the, the main kind of avenues through which are, are areas where a lot of our volunteers are doing the work of making the community. Um, but the third one, and and perhaps the one that you know I, in my capacity, am most directly involved with is the volunteers that uh, work on and with the SIGCHI Executive Committee in all of our different committees. So I'll take a few minutes now to just review what those are and what kinds of volunteer opportunities there are there. Um, and then certainly if, if anyone wants to hear more about any of these, you know, we're happy to, to chat more. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about volunteering a little more broadly before we get into some of the more brainstorming. So the SIGI Executive Committee itself is a committee of volunteers and is the sort of committee that, you know, uh, governs or oversees, not govern, oh, you, may I can correct me if that language is wrong, but sort of the oversees the, the SIGI community. And so each person on the committee has a, a particular functional role. So we have a chair for sustainable accessibility, a chair for sustainability, um, chapters, conferences, as we saw on the previous slide. And each uh, many of those people have committees that support them in that functional duty. So some of the committees that are created are here. Um, we are in the progress of forming a couple of other committees related to communications, publications, equity, partnerships. And then I will be creating a volunteering committee. Um, so if you're really excited or, or really sort of motivated to work on some of the issues that we talk about today, let me know and I'd be happy to let you know when, when, that starts, when, when we start to you know, recruit people for that. So that's to kind of support the, the functional areas of the EC. We also have committees, um, and again, all of these committees are volunteer um, based. Um, we have committees that implement the programs that SIGCHI operates and is known for. So these are things like the Gary Marsden Awards, the SIGCHI Development Fund, the SIGCHI Awards. Um, there are committees that run those processes. Um, and if you, you know, are interested in those, if you have received one of these and want to sort of pay it forward, um, those are also committees that you can join. Um, I think um, we actually have an open call for the awards committee right now. Um, and then we also have a number of committees and groups that are that are dedicated to supporting the SIGCHI community. So this is things like SIGCHI CARES, um, the Research Ethics Committee. Um, and then we have a cluster of committees that are focused on, you know, visioning. So I, or I would say sort of expanding the community, extending the SIGCHI community, and then envisioning what the community can and should and might look like in the future. So this is groups like the Latin America Committee, the Asia Committee, and then Futuring, um, uh, which is sort of uh, particularly oriented towards early career people and thinking about the vision of the community. And then MedCHI, which is the Mediterranean CHI group uh, or you know um, committee. So these are a couple of the different areas where the EC itself is um, creating volunteer opportunities. Um, and again, happy to chat any more about these, um, but certainly every, you know, 
almost everybody on the EC is involved in something related to, to what's on this slide. So I want to kind of zoom out a little bit more, um, and especially for those of you who are thinking about, um, you know, I think Sarah, you mentioned kind of thinking about, well, what, well, how can I contribute or sort of what role can I have in, in the community? And one thing that I think is, is hel a helpful way of thinking about volunteer work is to think about it as, you know, a, a pathway or a, a trajectory. And so I think we're, we're maybe used to thinking about this in the sense of our careers, right? Like we might have a a broader goal or a grand vision for kind of where we want to go in our career. And then we think about, well, what are the different things that I can do over the course of many years to get to that point? Um, and I think volunteering can be, uh, uh, there's, you can apply a similar mentality to volunteering um, because there, you know, again, there's so many different volunteer opportunities within the community, but they also do kind of build on each other. And so if you really sort of want to work up to something that's like a really high profile visible role, uh, what are the things that you can do to get there? Or if you're really dedicated to making a certain kind of impact in the community, um, what are the different places where you can sort of advance that goal? Um, and so just very briefly, again, in kind of thinking about this as a pathway and the fact that we, in the course of being a part of this community, you know, you're going to take on many different kinds of roles. Um, and so just very briefly, kind of my own trajectory has been mostly oriented towards the volunteer work that goes into conferences. So in the past, I've been a conference attendee, a peer reviewer, a student volunteer, a PC member, a session chair. So, you know, helping to create and contribute to both the program and then a bit of the actual event of the conference itself. Um, but I was really interested in the, the the community itself, you know, especially after hearing about this idea that we are volunteer driven and really thinking about how does the, you know, how can I contribute to the community itself, which is what um, brought me into this role. So very briefly, I want to touch on a couple of avenues that SIGCHI, the SIGCHI EC is working on to help the community thrive. And that's really what I see my role and remit as doing in, in this capacity as the uh, adjunct chair for volunteer support. So what does our community need to feel like it is thriving? And certainly, you know, there've, there've, for a long time, there have been challenges to that, but the pandemic kind of really, the pandemic, um, you know, global protests, just everything that's been happening in the world over the past few years, I think, made it almost impossible for us to ignore those challenges or to, to maybe, you know, pretend like they were, you could just kind of tweak them. Like there are some really big picture things that we have to think about when it comes to supporting people, creating sustainable, you know, safe and sustainable and equitable environments to volunteer. So some of the ways that we've been um, trying to tackle some of these challenges, um, one is sort of our approach to volunteering or our ethos of volunteering is sort of to have an open call process. Um, and so I can talk a little bit more of that if, about that if people have questions, but basically we have a form on the platform submittable where people can, um, if you're interested in volunteering, you can fill out that form. And also if there uh, will often have calls for specific opportunities, like when some of the EC committees are recruiting. Um, and so we, people will apply through that, but this is basically a way for people in the community to say, Hey, I am interested in volunteering. Um, and then to give us, you know, or whoever is organizing that opportunity, a chance to see what, what you want to do and then help to match you with an opportunity that aligns with that, but also to create a more, uh, inclusive process. So it's not just, you know, the, the standard, like, Oh, I have this volunteer position, so I'm going to ask my friend to do it. Um, we also use various modes of communication to engage with the community. So this is things like the open session that we're having right now, where we, we invite you know anyone to come in and, and talk with us, um, or the equity talk series that we ran, um, I think last year. Um, and we also have various working groups who are tackling specific issues or topics. Um, so this is things like we recently created a hybrid working group to address issues and come up with best practices related to hybrid conferences. Um, and this also includes things like SIGCHI Cares, which is focused, again, on um, helping people if, who encounter anything, you know, in part helping people who encounter any kind of difficult experiences to ensure that they, to support them through kind of navigating the process of addressing um, those harms. Um, 
We also use, you know, written communication outlets to, to, again, kind of communicate with the community and to share with them what we're working on. So, for example, we're working on a Community Square um, article for interactions on volunteering and burnout, since I know um, that's a huge challenge. It has been, but certainly has been exacerbated by things like the pandemic. Um, and then we also have a variety of policies and documentation related to volunteering. And so for those of you who are in any kind of, you know, I know we have um, folks involved in chapters and in conferences in the room. Um, and so these are documents that you can use the volunteer articulation and volunteer handbook with the volunteers that you're working with. Um, and so basically, you know, through this, these variety of efforts, um, the EC has been, uh, these are some of the ways that we've been working to foster um, a safer, more sustainable and more equitable community. Um, and so I wanted to kind of give that context and background to sort of set the stage for a broader discussion. But um, with that, I would love to sort of turn it now back into the room and, and get a, a conversation or a brainstorm going. And these are just some questions to get us going. Um, but if there's other things that you want to talk about, feel free to bring those up. So things like challenges, what are some pressing problems or issues that you see in relation to volunteering with FOR and SIGCHI? And then, you know, what recommendations or what ideas do you have? So what can SIGCHI and the EC do to improve or strengthen the volunteer experience? And then also, what do you think that people and communities in SIGCHI can do themselves to improve or strengthen the volunteer experience? Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing, but we do have a Google Doc. Um, I can't see the chat, so I, okay. Um, but we do have a Google Doc where we have these questions um, and I can, we can also put them in the chat and everything, but um, basically those were just some of the ideas that we sort of, the seeds that we wanted to plant, um, and then we'd love to, to hear, hear your feedback. Um, thank you, Priya. It was very, very informative, um, at least for me. I'm curious about what this hybrid working group is. Or, or do you have any information about this? Because I feel like this is an increasingly pressing problem, which uh, I think we're all struggling with, and especially when it, when it comes to scale. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, who is this group composed of, and what what do they spend their time doing to make this happen? Yeah, so they're actually recruiting right now. I can speak to this. Um, so if you were at Kai 22, there was a SIG, a special interest group that um, that we did on hybrid uh, conferences and events. And a few people came to that. There was also a session for the conference um, leadership that we did to elicit input on COVID safety and on just hybrid uh, in general. And uh, actually, this is also where we had a nice discussion about um, Rexis, as I mentioned, and, and their plans. And uh, we were recruiting for this working group over the last month or so. I think that some people have been recruited and there are also some um, conversation still happening. But the main goal for this group uh, is to see how our conferences can be encouraged and how some of the burden of putting together hybrid measures for participation can be outsourced to um, a, a, a more centralized kind of working group which has representation from different conference communities. So uh, yeah, to your point, yes, conferences are so either they are headed in that direction or they are actually not pursuing hybrid anymore because they feel like it's too hard. And uh, we would like to, so we cannot require that conferences are hybrid, right? As the EC, we don't wanna be doing that, but also we do wanna encourage um, hybrid measures where possible because they do offer more participation, safer participation. and and more affordable participation options. So that's something that this group is looking into basically. And if, if you're interested in, um, in volunteering on that, I think that they're still, they're, they're still open to um, applicants. Yeah, I mean, I would like to maybe speak with them or see a little bit more about what it, so I always find the challenge with the volunteering roles that it's hard to estimate how much time is needed for yeah. this. 
Um, and of course, it's, there's no point volunteering if you're going to end up feeling burnt out and not really contributing much. It's kind of like you're just having your name there for. Yeah, uh, that's a really great point, right? So I think um, on the EC committees, there isn't that much of a heavy workload. So there's the, there's the executive committee and then all of those people have their own committees. And I think for each of those committees, they meet once a month. And then uh, they work on um, whether it's policy making, whether it's initiatives that they're trying to um, start up. The, the workload is a little bit less. I think on the uh, EC, it's fairly high. Um, and um, for me, it's pretty much a full-time job. <laughs> but uh, I think what we're trying to do is, is create these structures in a more stable way so that people who want to give a little bit of their time you know, can still contribute, right? Because there's not, it's, it's a huge organization. There isn't that much that, that happens, but we do need a steady um, volunteer base. So uh, it is a challenge, but that's kind of what Priya is also trying to do with these sessions. Great, thank you. We had a couple more people join in. Would you like to, so we did introductions in the room. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Those who just joined. Hi, I'm Arun. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, my research is in the space of application technologies uh, and also human computer interaction. So. And you had this question, uh, Priya, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So there's a question about our open call for volunteering form. Um, and so the form itself, you know, you'll fill, you'll, you'll create an account on submittable and then provide some basic information. And then there's a couple of um, questions about sort of what kinds of um, uh, like a bit about your background and, and what you're interested in doing. And so I would, I would, I would encourage you to provide some information there um, because that way it does give us a sense of, again, who you are as a person, but also what it is that you're interested in uh, contributing and getting out of the experience, which can help those of us who are cr creating or have volunteer roles to, to get a, a sense of, is that role the best fit for you? Or might somebody else have a good fit for you? Um, another thing that's important, so the forum also has, you know, there's a, a list of um, like the different committees on the EC. Basically, you can say, I'm interested in volunteering for, and then you can check off, you know, anything on that list. And that's, I, I mentioned this on, on Tuesday also, but I would encourage people, um, especially if you're not necessarily responding to a specific call, like if, if there's a call for people on, you know, the volunteering committee and that's what you want to do, you check that one box and that's fine. Um, but if you're submitting kind of just more generally, which we encourage people to do, um, then I would also, I would encourage people to think, to th really think about which one of those opportunities are you truly most interested in? Because I've seen sometimes people will, will check off everything. I think especially people who are either early career or newer to the community might check off, you know, everything or, or several of the boxes. Um, but that actually makes it a little bit harder for those of us to understand really which opportunities are the best fit for you. So I would say think about which ones you're checking off, but then use those boxes to give us just a little bit of a sense of what interests you about those particular um, topics and what kinds of things you're interested in doing. But, you know, don't don't feel like, you know, you're not applying for uh, certainly put some thought into what you're writing, but don't feel like you're not submitting a paper for review. So don't I you know, we don't want this to become a, a burden for people who are applying. It's really just to give us a sense of what you're what you're interested in doing so that we can match you with the right opportunity. I wonder. Maybe that's also a question for this room, right? How do we make it um, clearer? Like these questions that have come up, they're great questions. And also, how do you think the system that we have could be iterated upon uh, to make these things clearer? I have uh, some, some ideas about this. 
And I can tell you uh, as a person that would go to the website and I see, you know, a bunch of names on the committee mm -hmm. and I, then I see some forms, I see some calls. I have no tangible way of knowing what that really entails. So I see, you know, communications. Um, what does that really mean? Is that, is that on the website? Is that on social media? Is it together? So sometimes I, I feel like uh, being specific about examples of what the role entails helps people to have a better idea. And you know what? I say this from a position of, you know, I've been around for some time. I've been on committees, conferences. I get firsthand experience from people I know that, that tell me these things. Mm -hmm. but let's suppose I wasn't. How, how would I perceive this? It's intimidating. I feel like I need to volunteer because I need to be connected to the community, but because nobody in the community knows me, they were probably not gonna pick me. So it's a bit of a, a chicken and egg process. So the people who are in are already in and they stay in. And then the people who are completely outsiders, there's no way for them to penetrate this kind of wall. And it's not intentional. It's just the way things work to some extent. So one thing I found out that's helpful is to kind of list a few exemplary tasks of what a role would entail. So how, I mean, what, what does it mean to be a volunteer chair, for example? What kind of tasks do you have to do? You have to reach out to people. It probably means you need to have some good communication skills so that you can coordinate and collaborate with people from across the world. You're probably going to want to have some calls that are going to straddle time zones. So that's going to be later in the evening. So if you're not willing to do that, or if you have a family, let's say, probably it's not a good idea to sign up for this at that moment, right? So making things tangible, yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to say. That's really, that, that's, that's great. Um input and i think you know priya i was just thinking that on although we send out emails when mm -hmm. when people are looking to recruit right and those emails go out on sekai members and then um there is a social media post but the social media posts don't really capture that much because they're all short so really the only content that actually explains what the committee is going to be about is either if you got that email or if you actually sign up and then you'll get to talk to the person who's recruiting and then they will tell you in the call um, what the role is gonna be about. So yeah, the information flow is a little bit, like it's not it's not open to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I think um, one challenge there also can be, I'm just thinking about the different EC committees and I mean, I am totally with you on the value of not just saying what the role is, but trying, you know, speaking to what the tasks might entail or, or what skills might be useful for that role. But I think one of the challenges is also sometimes, um, like, for example, with some of the EC committees, part of the reason why people might be forming committees is to get to bring people who are really dedicated to that topic on board, but then for them to together figure out what are the initiatives that we want to work on. And so I know that sometimes, or I, I'm thinking about, I think sometimes, sometimes it can be hard for the people who are creating the committee or creating the role, the, the roles to almost know what the role is. Um, and that I think it, it can be hard to communicate that, but I can understand also that it's not, it, it can also be, it's, it's perhaps not the most helpful to say like, well, here's this position, but we can't really tell you what it is. So I'm trying to think, you know, striking that kind of balance. But again, that's going to be different for different kinds of roles. But can, yeah, can, I mean, there is an information flow issue there, kind of conveying that um, can be a challenge. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So in some cases, it's almost like, hey, do you care about accessibility? And yeah. if you do, let's all get together and then think of some cool things we can do. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's it's not so much as this is what your role is going to entail, but more um, how do we bring together people who are passionate about this idea, like making all our PDFs accessible, right? Yeah. Uh, one person alone is may not be able to do that, but if there's a team of people working towards that and working with all of the conferences on that, then it's much more achievable. And I think that's what the accessibility committee has done, like defined their goals after they put together a group of like 15. Yeah, well, and I think even what you just said um, is a really good example of that, where even if you're not necessarily providing examples of 
particular volunteer tasks or roles, but even saying that, you know, do you want to make the community more accessible? For example, like how do we make our PDFs accessible? And some that is at least something tangible that people can latch on to that is like, oh, that's something that we could, that is a concrete thing that we could do. Um, and so I do like that, uh, that providing even those kinds of examples can help give people a sense of what it is that that group is wanting to do. Um, I also see Arun, another comment, or, I mean, another question. What about communications, publications, like Interactions Magazine? What are some volunteering opportunities there? Um, we have, well, broadly around, we have, we, uh, we have a, a committee related to publications that, that focuses on the sort of ACM, um, the, the conference publication work. Um, but for Interactions, I think they're actually right now looking for a new set of editors, um, right? Editors-in-chief. Editors, I, I yeah. They had it called out for a really long time. And I think now they're doing interviews to figure out who was gonna be. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's editor. also, I mean, at least the magazine, if I remember correctly, is under ACM's remit, right? Yes, so uh, Interactions is, 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 I don't know how much detail is necessary here, but basically it is a Sikai um, specific kind of community, but it is run by the ACM. So ACM runs its its journals and magazines like, like communications of the ACM as well. So um, we don't get to tell interactions that this is what you should do with your uh, magazine or this is how you should recruit. Yeah. So we would hope that they would they would keep that open. Um, and also with a new team coming on, I think we will have that conversation with them as to how they're planning to recruit. But um, also I wanted to say that a lot of the things that Interactions does in principle, we also do through our comms committee. So, yeah. and that is a committee that is recruiting right now, but the work of outreach, you know, making sure that these things, these, these um, these things that we talked about that are so opaque around like what does volunteering entail on a day-to-day -day basis, those are things that we're trying to make more transparent. And that's uh, work that the communications committee um, uh, is doing or could be doing. So uh, you're welcome to, to consider volunteering with that. Another thing that that made me think of, and I, if you're a student, Crossroads is sort of the student magazine. Um, so there might be there might be volunteering opportunities there. But I think this is also, um, and this is something that I, part of why I sort of gave the presentation in the way that I did is I find it there's so many volunteering opportunities within the community. But I also find that it's important to know like. Almost, I, it's, it's not this simple, but the way I'm thinking, it's like, who's in charge of that? And so, for example, we, we, we interface, we connect with interactions on things, but like, we don't actually, we're not actually in charge of any sort of volunteer opportunities that they might have. And so, yeah, that's where, you know, if comms work is something that you're interested in doing, at least with the EC, our comms committee would be the best avenue for that. Or sort of, well, let me rephrase that. If communicating with the with the SIGCHI community is something you're really interested in doing. The comms committee would be, at least from the, from our perspective, like we have a comms committee for that purpose. And so if, you know, that would be one way that you could get involved if that's something, if that's the kind of contribution that you're interested in making. Again, Crossroads is not our magazine. Yeah. So <laughs> we, True, we wanna... but it, just in the sense of like more more general opportunities to get involved. I know that they for students that might be a better fit than something like the other magazine. So yes, full clarification. We're not involved with that either. Um, so at least for for comms work that we volunteer work that we are more involved in, that would be the comms committee. And the comms committee is recruiting and the comms committee is open to students volunteering. So I just want to be be sure. Actually, that is something that, that we've been talking about as well, that a lot of these opportunities, it's not clear that they're welcoming of students in early careers. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it does involve work, but uh, on the flip side, I would say that it's actually a great way to learn more about the community and to get involved and see how conferences are organized and all of that. So, uh, so the rewards I think might um, might also be great, and we we have to think about how we um, we're able to invite more students. Um, I can comment on the comms aspect because I'm involved with comms for Thai Netherlands and now also for this year's Thai conference, it's comms co-chair. It's quite a lot of work. It's very involving and you shouldn't be making mistakes. Like if you post something, you should make sure it's in the right channel with yeah. the right kind of voice, also being respectful towards people's cultures, backgrounds. Um, so in that sense, it's it's a lot of, uh, and it's also very time demanding. Mm -hmm. So like we need to post something on, let's say uh, Diwali or Halloween or something. It has to be today. So like, <laughs> if I can't do it and my co chair can do it, you know, sometimes things need to run out. Um, I'm not saying this to scare anyone. Uh, please go for comms, of course. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is involving as we had we already mentioned. But actually, Kai this year seems to be doing a lot of interesting things on the comms front. So, that's awesome. Bino and I. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, thank you for that. I did see the Diwali wish, and I've been seeing that there's been a lot of Instagram posts and, and such more than previous years. So, yeah, definitely been noticed. It's good to hear. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, I think that also speaks to, um, and, you know, if others have thoughts, feel free to jump in. And something that I've been thinking a lot about, I, I going back to that tension of sort of wanting to provide, let a, like the, I think the, the, the information flow, how do you get the right information to people is, is one issue. Aside from that, I think there is also the, it's sort of the, the content piece. It's the, how do you communicate this tension between what the role like clearly defining or specifying what a role is versus having that be a little bit more emergent um but then also clarifying the kind the different kinds of demands that different roles might need like i think what you just now said right now abdo is really it is useful context for someone who is wanting to get involved in a comms kind of role and i'm thinking and and yeah, like you said, it's not it's not just a matter of balancing what you're personally interested in contributing or where, but also, you know, what where you are in your career, what kind of experience or background you have, but then also just what your life circumstances are and what time you have to 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 dedicate. And I'm trying to think about like what are the ways to help to give people that kind of information so that they can better understand sort of what it is they're trying to sign up for or, or think about, well, what opportunities really will be the right fit for me, given all of these different things, not just what I'm interested in. And I can see how like with our open call, obviously we have um, we have your op the opportunity for you to mention what you're interested in doing and share a little bit more. But in terms of help, like from our end, helping the community better understand the the different nuances, whether it's the time demands or things like that of the roles is something that I have been wondering a lot about. How do you how do you do that without just slapping tons and tons and tons of information on a website? <laughs> yeah, so maybe I want to clarify, it's like, um, I'm not highlighting that this is a problem. Maybe this is not a problem at all. Maybe it's just something that I thought of now. Maybe it's enough what's already on the website and then people who are interested, as Nea suggested earlier, they attend one of those sessions and then they hear firsthand from a person. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the description is just, you know, verbal. It doesn't need to tie. You can clarify that you're not tied to those specific roles or whatnot. So maybe, maybe there's no real solution to be, to be had here. Maybe, maybe it's already working. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking about, you know, the person who, you know, may not even come here because they're just, their expectations are like, nah, this is, clearly not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. and I, I was just wondering whether is it a matter of communicating on the website or is it a matter of, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a solution for this. Like, how do you get people to even come in? But maybe you don't even need that. Maybe there's enough volunteers already. One proposal, because I'm always 
in problem fixing mode. So, but one proposal uh, is in our monthly meetings, right? Like when we have our monthly uh, open meetings, which we just did on Wednesday, for instance, this month, there is a portion at the end, which is about um, open calls. And we announce open calls then if there is an active open call. And that could be a place where we just always mention that this is what the role entails. And we have been doing that in general, I think, when someone puts it out. But we could just make that a standard feature that every, every meeting we uh, either start or finish by talking about the open calls that we have um, at the time. And there, if people want to clarify or if they want to know you know, specifics about the roles or just time commitments, they can, they can also just ask. So I don't know, Priya, that's something to, to think about maybe that we just always have like a two minute portion that, yeah. that is devoted to just, what are we looking for now? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Just that reminder to people. And for people to know that this is a place where they will, they can find out on a monthly basis. Yeah. Where we're looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see that we have sorry, 10 minutes. I was just wondering um, what yeah. about um, having such segments on, during conferences, um, some, some, some open sessions during conferences where people are interacting already? So that at least they have a fair idea what kind of um, um, volunteer opportunities are available, um, how to sign up for them, and then probably how to even sign up for such uh, monthly meetings, and then they can get in that um, um, understanding of what to do and how to to do it. Mm -hmm. Have you been seeing the emails that go out, uh, Sarah, on the like the monthly EC meetings Greatly, uh, from the University of Sorry, right here, but sorry. Sure, sure. So I get I get them, but I'm wondering how many others also do get them or don't get them after the conferences. Um, okay, so I see. Um, so everybody who's a Sikai member gets the email uh, and then it goes out on social media on our uh, channels. That's basically all the outreach that we do. But do you think there are other ways in which we could be doing outreach about those meetings? Possibly be sort of a, a printout that you get, let's say, with your uh, conference package or whatnot, like a, like a postcard that says, you know, these meetings do take place if you're interested in helping organize Sikai conferences, not just tied or not just whatever. Maybe it's, or again, maybe it's not a problem that needs to be solved. Maybe it's just us we thinking about it. Mm, I mean, it's, it's probably not that we're missing like hundreds of volunteers, right? But, but in the spirit of making this more sustainable for everybody, because to prevent burnout, we need a more steady volunteer base so that the responsibilities can be distributed um, and, and more equitably. So I think in the interest of that, I mean, one option might be to have something like an uh, advertisement that says that this is how you volunteer and just have uh, conference uh, websites make that more um, apparent. And I know that Erin actually physically went to all conferences and gave that presentation. Um, I, I don't know if, if we can or want to afford that, um, but, but I think with so many conferences being hybrid or remote, um, there might be ways for you to do that Priya or even just con communicate with someone who's on the conference leadership. So that, that's something mm -hmm. to also think about. Yeah. Kim, do you have any um, uh, thoughts from just seeing how Rexus does things? 
um, Rexus does things by by tapping who wants to go in the sense that I never signed up as a volunteer. I was asked to to do it and and basically it's every year there is there are a lot of new people joining but but they get asked they don't they don't sign up everywhere um i was thinking about saying you're saying that you wanted more volunteers and i think maybe i'm a little bit out of of the group of people who want to volunteer because so i for me from personally for me i basically never heard about sikai before last summer when somebody were missing some reviewers on an industry track on a conference and then suddenly oh that was Sikai and and then I signed up and and now I receive your emails um and I think maybe it it feels a lot like there is a lot of faces around so there is the Rexus conference and that's kind of the face that people see and and you're kind of behind that and and so I I would do a little bit more marketing, and and so I don't know if it's it's PhD students you're after or if it's professors or or who it is that you actually want to volunteer, but some kind of outreach program on on universities would probably be a good place or or maybe stands at the conferences a little bit more than. I think at Rexus there was uh, one of those uh, pieces of papers in in a bag you received at the start, and I think most people that get those bags they they take out the funny Disney pen and then they just chuck the rest of it in in the dustbin. <laughs> in the sense that, with all honesty, I, I do try to look through them myself, but but still, it's it's just information that you you don't really need at that point anyway um so so maybe as they try to put a poster somewhere on the conferences or maybe after a conference where people are still very engaged in in the community of a conference then send out an email but make it much shorter than what you're doing right now because people see an email that is really long and then there's okay i'll read it tomorrow and then then it just gets into the pile with all the other things that i'll do tomorrow um so i i'm not saying that you should uh, lower yourself to today's pop standard but maybe at, make it a little bit more fashionable to be part of um and i i really hope i don't step on anybody's feet because i i've come to really appreciate and admire the work that you do so so please don't misunderstand me i just think that if you want to reach this out to, to more people and the young people then maybe you need to do it more um more uh, i'm afraid to say twitter style today after the recent day <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah anyway i have a quick comment on this um so just a very quick win would be if you look at the sick guy twitter handle uh, and i'm sure maybe there's a facebook one I mean, pin up a post with like an image of saying, if you want to volunteer, we have these open roles. Because in some ways, the people who want to do this, they will, they were the ones who are going to go to the end. And, but we need to get the word out for others because there's 10,000 followers on ACM Sikai. So it's a very quick way to see, hey, you know, if I'm interested, I'll click on the link or a QR code or something. 10,000? No. We have ten thousand followers. That's nine thousand nine hundred eighty-eight. Sorry, <laughs> ninety-nine. I, I just so. started following them now. <laughs> Although you're right, maybe we need to be moving to other uh, platforms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sick guy mastodon or something. <laughs> yeah. We should there actually do that, yeah. Priya. Yeah, hmm? yeah. There is an ACI one. I There's saw the yeah. ACI social. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think it's one thing to invite volunteers. I'm not sure that that's, that's our main kind of concern here. It's also keeping them, right? So mm -hmm. keeping volunteers engaged, uh, making it worthwhile for them. And I think that's always the harder question. Like, it's it's not that... 
uh, I mean, we have like about 10,000 people who go to our conferences. And so they, in some form or fashion, know about Sikai. And, and uh, although half of them probably think that Sikai equals Sikai conference, but <laughs> at least half, I think, would know that they're slightly different and that Sikai kind of oversees 26 conferences. But, uh, but I think the really thorny issues also come up, like what Priya said, right, about burnout. That's been a real thing that people have been talking about through COVID or just um, uh, maybe even things like uh, awards and how, what kinds of awards we, we give to our volunteers, how do we recognize their labor? Um, so these are sort of uh, maybe later questions to address that what do you do once you have volunteers? How do you keep them engaged? How do you keep, make sure that they feel valued? Just by that we're about at the hour. So for anyone who has to leave, you know, feel free. Um, but yes, no, I mean, I, I really, I think these are really important things. Yeah, Kim. Um, I, I do need to leave, but what, just one <laughs> comment on that. The reason why I started volunteering at the, the Rexus was to get access to all the clever people that are in there. So, so basically, it's it's not so much for fame and and money. It's much more to to be able to get close to the professors that does all the cool stuff. And so, I would I, I don't know about rewards in the sense that I'm also in a place in the world where rewards doesn't matter much for students. I think, but still, I I think that the networking opportunities where you can get access to to mm -hmm. other PhDs or other professors or similar that is something that is very important, at least for me, outside of the university or academics. Um, so so I'm, I'm not saying that you should take your, your pop stars and, and then put them on pictures, but still, in a sense, more than the money, say, there is actually, you become part of a network of people that can help you and, and yeah, in that way. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, we're at our time. Thank you all so much for giving your time and coming to this session. Um we, we yeah, this was I think really helpful just to get a sense of, you know, what people are thinking and a lot of really great ideas. Um if you think of anything else and you're like, "Oh, I should have said that." You know, you can always feel free to contact us. I'll quickly put my email address in the chat but um if beyond that thank you everybody um we hope to see you at future events and uh we really value that you took your time and spent it with us thank, thank you. you likewise thank you very much thank Great. you yeah thank you so much thank you thank you